in 2022's finals and also well into the future, the Seas are going to be a problem to beat four times out of seven. Game seven against Miami saw Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart each post 20 points, five assists, and five rebounds, becoming just the second trio in the 75-year history of the NBA to ever achieve that. Boston's already taken out the number one and number three ranked teams in defensive rating during these playoffs in two seven-game thrillers and ranked number two themselves in that area. Battle-tested after going through a stacked Eastern Conference and taking out the likes of Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Jimmy Butler, the Celtics don't make things easy on themselves with slow starts and lackadaisical turnovers at times, but one thing's for sure, they're more than equipped to make things interesting against Stephen Curry and the Dubs. This video shows you why the Boston Celtics should be feared. Before continuing, only 10.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Texting Kobe before the game and honoring the all-time great by wearing his number 24 armband, Jason Tatum didn't let the Black Mamba down, going on to post the loudest 26-point game of the playoffs. He also grabbed 10 rebounds and dished out 10 assists. On Sunday, the superstar either took it upon himself to get it done or set up his teammates on crucial possessions all throughout the game, getting it done from any area of the court. I should have mentioned this in my video about the Celtics' big man rotation after Game 5, but Jason Tatum's wingspan and strength pretty much gives the Celtics another versatile center out there on both ends of the court to pair with the godfather Al Horford and the Time Lord Robert Williams. Here, directly as the ball rotates over to Smart, Tatum knows he's going to shoot it and crashes the glass, uses his 7-foot reach and elite standing jump to snatch it away from Tucker, and he goes back up with a monster finish. This next rebound comes on the defensive glass, but it's just as crucial. You see the pesky Lowry try and sell the contact while boxing out, but watch the great footwork from Jason to perfectly time the rebound and avoid fouling. But more importantly, with Miami crashing the O boards, Tatum pushes it up in transition, and that leads to a wide open three for Marcus Smart. I know those two boards will go completely overlooked, but Boston needed to throw the first punch in Game 7, and those two rebounds helped give them a 9-1 lead in the early going. But the most improved and also underrated aspect in Tatum's bag is his playmaking. For some reason, he's known strictly for his scoring, but in the postseason, Jason's only .3 behind Marcus Smart for the Celtics lead in assists per game. Here, Smart gets the hockey assist after pushing it up in transition, but along with that pushing of the pace, it's this slick dime from Jason where he catches the pass backwards, spots the Dark Knight cutting to the paint, and all in one motion, locates Grant for the and one. Directly after Miami called timeout, Jason shows you what happens if you sleep on him from beyond the arc. PJ tries to close out, but it's just not good enough. Very next possession, after getting the switch onto the smaller and less capable than Oladipo defensively in Gabe Vincent, Jason displays some sauce off the dribble from deep range, as the intimidating 8 foot 11 inch high release point on that 3 pointer gives minis like Vincent no chance at contesting it. It looks like Jason's about to pull up right here as he goes up halfway into his jumper, drawing both Tucker and Vincent before finding Smart in the lane. And you may not have noticed this, but Smart also fakes a pass on this possession, faking the dump off to the corner, which makes Tyler Hero hesitate coming over for the rotation, and Smart lays it in. Improvisational offense that these Boston attackers have lived off. When it was all said and done, Boston's top duo of the Jays had put the abundance of playoff experience they've already gained to good use. Jason Tatum's now 4-1 in Game 7s, while Jalen Brown's 5-1. After an incredibly poor start to this season, there were questions of whether or not Brown and Tatum could play together on the wing as trade rumors began to arise. Putting things into perspective, the Celtics were 11th in the East back in January, they're now in the finals, the greatest in-season turnaround in NBA history, which is proven by the fact that Boston had the greatest second half of the season record for a team below 500 at the midway point of all time. Boston has now eliminated each of the three teams that have taken them out in the playoffs in the last three consecutive seasons. 
Brooklyn beat them in 2021's first round, but the Celtics got their sweet revenge in this year's first round. Miami beat the Seas in the bubble, and the Heat were just taken out by Boston in the conference finals. And after Milwaukee beat them back in 2019's East Semis, Boston took the Bucks out in seven in this year's second round. I've seen some people disrespectfully calling the Celtics' path to the finals a walk in the park, saying the Nets were missing Ben Simmons, the Bucks were missing Middleton, and the Heat's top players were all banged up. I know those things are true, but what people with those opinions are forgetting is in round one against Brooklyn, the team's best rim protector and big man defender Robert Williams missed two games against the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round, the DPOY in Smart missed a game, and Robert Williams missed more than half the series in that Bucks series. You also can't forget Derek White, Al Horford, and again, Rob Williams, each missed one game in the conference finals against Miami. So it's completely unfair to say that Boston's gotten lucky here and taken advantage of other teams' injuries. The scariest part about this Celtics team is their potential. Tatum and Brown have a long way to go in their development, the team as a whole can easily clean up their turnover issue and slow starts with a tad more focus and pressure on their passes. Point is, as constructed, with all their imperfections, which are easily correctable mistakes, as I said, that'll come with time, Boston's intuitive shot creators and athleticism both offensively and defensively, that alone got them through the Eastern Conference. Looking back on it, and that up-and-coming Tatum and Brown combo has gotten the team to four conference finals appearances in six seasons. In one of those six seasons, Brown was injured, and in another, Kyrie threw a pity party for himself. It's great to see the likable former All-Star in Big Al Horford reach the finals for the first time in 15 seasons. What a robbery the Kemba Walker trade was, as re-adding the Godfather has given Boston such an important floor spacing and defensive presence. A bona fide superstar and top five player in Jason Tatum became one of four players in NBA history to reach the NBA Finals while averaging 25-5-5 before turning the age of 25. The other three are all-time great champions in the modern era in Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Dwayne Wade. I'll have my series preview tomorrow, but during the regular season, the Warriors and Celtics were tied for the best defensive rating in basketball at 106.9, so this is probably going to be at least a six-game war. Speaking of wars, Boston just had one with the Miami Heat, who came up one three-pointer away from playing into June. Let's give Jimmy Butler his props, who left it all on the floor in the Eastern Conference Finals, dropping 47 points, nine boards, and eight dimes on 16 for 29 shooting from the field in Game 6, and followed that up with 35 points and 9 rebounds on 13 for 24 shooting in Game 7. He played all but 2 minutes in the final 2 games. But even after taking out the feisty Jimmy Butler and a series before that taking down the most dominant force in the league in Giannis, there's zero complacency being displayed from Boston. Post-game, Coach Ime Udoka had an outstanding point, saying, We don't celebrate Eastern Conference championships in the Celtics organization. In your opinion, what should be Boston's main game plan in the finals? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Reese Kakoa who gives his prediction for the finals. Pause to read his take and the honorable mentions. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.